guys, it's Hairstyles Heather, so I'm back for my labor and delivery tutorial. So guys, I've been really super excited to like tell you guys about my labor and delivery story, even though I know we filmed everything, but I feel like in that video, you just kind of see everything, like what's going on, and you don't really get to hear like exactly like what I was feeling and what all we went through, like exactly, because there's some things that we didn't um, get to film, like everything was just so hectic, and especially with her coming early, like we did not think at all that it was time, like, I did not think that she was coming that night. It just happened so fast. It was just like, what? I cannot believe she's here since she was since she was here early at 34 weeks. Which I'm really, I really, really think that they had my due date off. Like it's just you never know for sure. But I had a gestational diabetes. I watched what I ate through the whole pregnancy. I worked out my regular routine. I worked out two days a week, every week, and. I kept up with it through the whole pregnancy. I watched it. I ate grilled chicken. I ate so good. I didn't drink glass of tea. I did not even eat any kind of like ice cream or sweet stuff hardly. Like I did so good on my dieting, keeping up my workouts and walking and everything. And for to be early and to be, still be six pounds, seven ounces, I could see that if I hadn't have kept up with my dieting and stuff. And so, to think that she, I mean, she was a month early, supposedly. So, I feel like they may have misjudged my due date, like, altogether. So, and I thought that with uh, Kinsley's, too. And then Claire, she came right at her due date. So, it's like, you never know exactly like, what was going on and everything. But I really think that she was about right on time. Because she really only had her only, okay, now I'm getting too much into other stuff. So. Sorry, I just like totally got off track. So let's get back to my labor and delivery <laughs> story. So to start it off, it first started with a couple days before. So if you watch our daily vlogs, a couple days before, I had noticed some bleeding in the morning, but it didn't keep on going through the day, just a little bit in the morning. And I was like, uh-oh, this is like, I didn't see any sign of this until the girls were here. So I was like, oh my gosh, it could be soon, but this is way too early. So, so, I still thought I'd, I had a month to go. So, everybody was commenting how big I was getting, or they thought I was having twins, or there's no way I still had a month to go. So, everybody just kind of knew it. I feel like that saw me a lot at the salon and everything. And people were commenting and asking me, when are you due? And they would be like, when I would tell them September 5th, they'd be like, what? Another month? I thought you were going to say any day. And I was getting that a lot lately. So, I felt like it was about time for her to come. Like, I, I should, I think her day should have been August 5th instead of September 5th. I really, really do. So next day, it was still a little bit of bleeding, but the same thing, it wasn't like all throughout the day. It was just like a little bit more towards the morning. But by that night, and I did work all that day, and I did go to the gym the day before, but I had been doing my regular workouts. I don't think that they like put me in labor or anything because I've been doing my regular two days a week workouts all through my pregnancy, and so I just was doing my regular routine. And so, anyways, that night after I got off of work, it was about 7.30, the girls had been at VBS. We went to VBS to pick up the girls, and they had like a little last night thing, like dinner and all that, and I was like starting to feel some contractions, and I was like, this is just probably Braxton and Hicks, like, you know, no big deal, but Joel's was like, get home and get in the bed. So I came home, got in the bed, I sat in the bed for a while, and I started to hurt a little bit, but I was like, uh... I don't know, so I called my mom and I said, okay, I'm starting to hurt it some, and I was telling Joel, and I was like, just get the girls to bed, and then I'll see how I'm feeling after that. And Joel's like, just seeing how often you're hurting, having contractions. And with both the girls, I didn't really have that. I didn't hurt really in my belly area for like regular contractions. I just started hurting in my back um, with both of the girls. Just my back would be like killing me. So, but anyways, I was like, well, this is different, but I'm going to start tracking them. So I started tracking them, and they're probably still in my phone here. Yeah, so this is where I started at 8.30, and every, at first it was just like every six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes. It was not like super close together, but anything like that, I was like, that's crazy that I'm having contractions right now. And then they got more like four to six, back and forth. Um, they're still pretty far apart, all until even... By the time my mom got here at 10, about 10.30 is when my mom got here, I was having them every so many, like, f 
anywhere from like four to ten minutes I was having them. So, so we did finally get to the hospital about 11 that night. And as soon as we got there, they, you know, asked you all the questions and stuff. And they checked me and she was like, oh, yeah, you're like a three, almost a four already. And I'm like, what? That's crazy. Like with Claire, I progressed a little bit at a time and got to a four. Anyways, I wasn't thinking like I was going to just automatically be like, it was time for it to come or whatever. Since I was 34 weeks, supposedly, I think, I really think I was probably more like 36, 37 weeks at least, if not, if they weren't off a month or whatever. Um, my other thing for that is that her ultrasound, her first ultrasound, they said she was, they just went off my first, my last period. They didn't really actually go off of measurements. And how chunky she was or looked a little bit bigger, had a schedule. They commented quite a few things about her being probably being on the bigger side. And then with them being so worried about my gestational diabetes here at the end, and they were like worried about her getting bigger, they were supposed to be doing an ultrasound that next week to see how she was doing. Like, so I just, and I just felt bigger through the whole pregnancy. Like I was getting bigger a lot faster and measuring bigger and all that kind of stuff. So I, I was worried about like the whole pregnancy. I feel like in every pregnancy video, I talk about just feeling so much bigger than I was at the girls at the time each week, you know. Because they thought I was 34 weeks, they tried to stop her, contract, stop my contractions, which didn't really help. Like, and they said I would start feeling bad, but I didn't start feeling bad. I still felt like I was having them every so often. It was hurting so bad, and I just wanted to like get it over with. Like, I was just, I wish that I could have just went to the hospital and had her, like I did with Claire, like right then, just had had her there instead of them having to transport me because I was just in so much pain. Like, I was just, I just felt like I was ready. And I knew with Claire, like, when all that started and then it was, like, time to have her, like, I just felt like, like them trying to stop the contractions was actually interfering with the whole thing. Like, I would have rather just kept on, um, you know, having her instead of trying to stop them than having to transport and all that. Because I was so scared on the transport. I was like, oh, my gosh, I feel like my wire's going to break or whatever, like, in between trying to get to the hospital. So it's a good drive, like, 30 minutes to get the other hospital, but just think, since she was er so early and needed to be in the NICU, they wanted to make sure I was over there. Anyway, so that's when they decided that they were going to have to transport me to the other hospital, and that's when I went on my first ambulance ride, which is so crazy. So then, it wasn't though probably until like about one, because they had put two IVs in my arm to try to get all of that medicine in me to stop the contractions, <laughs> and I really don't think that it did. So during... During the transition though, over to the other hospital, that's when they think that she flipped. If she wasn't already breached and head up the whole time, just because I felt so uncomfortable and she would like really stick out more in one spot. Like I showed in some videos, like where her, it just looked like a big bull of was like sticking out on one side or the other. And I thought that could have been like her head sticking out more so. And I was thinking it was probably like her booty. And I kept feeling her kick or like I kept feeling something stick out. It's like maybe it's her hand instead of her foot. I don't know. Or she really did just flip on me during the transition. There's no telling. I would have loved to get the ultrasound though and had seen if she was actually breech or head down or give her more time to turn on her own or whatever. So once we got there and got settled in at the new hospital, they checked, brought in ultrasound. The first doctor couldn't figure out where her head was because they couldn't find it low because it wasn't low. It was up high. And then the next doctor come in and was like, yep, there's her head. It was like way up here. And she was still up higher like she hadn't dropped the lower so it was just like I was just me and Joe were just like what we were so shocked like I was not thinking she was breached her head up at all because my last few appointments every doctor had said she's good and head down she's head down she's ready to get like just thought that she was head down so ah, I was just like so shocked and if you don't already know my story with my mom and my birth story this is actually the story that my mom went through. This is the same thing that my mom went through with me. Um, I was breached. They tried to turn me. Same thing as I'm about to tell you that I went through. And because, okay, well, let me tell you my story. And then, I mean, it's pretty much the same as my mom's. But So they said, okay, we just need to do a C-section because she's head up, you know. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to have her, um, and I was like, can I please, can we please try to 
flip her or whatever. And that was second thing the doctor said, okay, we can try to flip her. More than likely, it's going to be successful to flip her, knowing my size, and they could feel, really fill her, and he really felt like he could get her to flip. But since I was already in so much in the to labor, and my water was just on the verge of breaking, that once they turned her, and like, soon as they got her flipped, like, she was flipped, and she was good to go, but my water broke, and right when my water broke, that's when she came down and the cord prolapsed or like detached or whatever and the cord was in the way and she was like like losing oxygen not getting any nutrition for like he said it was like about four to five minutes that she he had to put his hand and hold her up so that she wasn't like i guess like so the cord wasn't in the way or whatever on her neck and everything so so the cord just messed us all up because if that cord had been fine and all, then I could have had her. But because of all of that, I had to rush me in for a C-section really fast. And all of that just was like so hectic and crazy. And pretty much that's the same story that I did with my mom. I was a C-section baby. My mom had me a C-section. The same story. They tried to flip her. The cord was in the way. And emergency C-section. So... So then I had to recover from a C-section, which I was not prepared for, but and not prepared for any of that um, situation. Like I never thought I would have to go through that. And now that I have, it's just like, ah, so crazy. I've had three kids, three different ways. Kinsley, I had an epidural. It was super long labor and all that. If you want to see that labor and delivery story. Claire's, no epidural, nothing, quick and easy. Was, took no time, got up, went to the bathroom and everything was fine. You can see her video. And then, and now this one, C section. So crazy. I have three girls, three totally different ways. It's just like, I cannot believe it. Anyways, during the C section, I got really shaky. And, but really, I just took a nap. Like, once she got out, she was here. She was um, not crying at first, and that worried us. But then they brought her to us, and she was crying a little bit. And they took her on to NICU to get some breathing treatments. And,. But then that's when they were fixing me up and I really just was like just went to sleep I was like okay she's here she's safe she's good and then that's when Joel you see Joel going back to see Camry but it's really weird because we're used to having the girls in the room with us afterwards and I want to start crying so so that was like their hardest thing probably um getting me in the room with us because we're so used to with the girls just being there just so used to um having the girls there and being able to hold her it's like the hardest thing not um having her in the room with us when she was first born and holding her so anyways then after Joel got back to me once I got all fixed up and then he showed me her picture and everything. That was really awesome. And then pretty much it was like by that oh yeah, I wasn't telling y'all what time stuff. I think it was about three fifteen by the time that they like tried to flip her and everything. And then and then I had her by three fifty five by C section and she was six pounds, seven ounces, and eighteen inches. And then so by that time it was like time we needed to just get some rest and try to recover. So they took me back to my room, went to sleep, woke up the next morning and felt like I've never hurt so bad in my life. To try to like get up, like when I tried to get up for the first time, oh my gosh, I was like, I cannot do this. I was hurting so bad. I was like, there's no way I can get out of this bed. But they did finally get me out of the bed to go to the bathroom and then to get in the wheelchair to go see Camry. And that was like the hardest thing in the world. It was so hard. So I went to see Camry and she was on the CPAP thing. And um, then we, so that was the next morning. So this was, I actually did her, her actual birth video into two parts. Because the first part was mostly like labor and delivery, which was the first part. And the next part was like the day after was the day that she was born but it's just so much that we did that day that i was like i need to do this in two parts so that's why if you see like 
it ends and then you can see the next one as far as what I'm talking about now when we went to go see her and everything but that day was so hard like I did not want to move like at all the second day I did a lot better and Joel taught me into walk in the halls a little bit so it was actually it was it was fine if I was either laying down or if I was up walking but the in-between part like getting up and out of the bed was so so hard so hard and then by the third and fourth day was way better way better and now that it's been a week then it's getting a lot better even more uh, i still need to rest a good bit because i do get really sore sometimes but other if i do try to do too much and with the girls are clean or whatever then i can start to tell that i need to take a nap and rest what camry is so i pray i feel like that's pretty much it for my labor and delivery video like I feel like I hope I didn't leave anything out. But this is going to be a super long video. I did not realize how long I would be talking about my labor and delivery. And then she just had a pretty much the CPAP for the day. And that was it. And then she had jaundice that we had to work on for about five days. We actually left on the seventh day that she'd been in the NICU for a week, pretty much. But they were just working on her jaundice and stuff. But everything is good now, so... She's great and awesome, and that's what I'm saying. At 34 weeks, that's all the problems she had. Like, Claire had a big problem with the jaundice, and we had to go back to the hospital. So, it's just like, that's one, That's another reason I, I really think that they had my due date off, and she pretty much came when she was supposed to around her due date. I really do think that was the case this time around. But, anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you've made it all the way here to the end, because this is a super long video, but I just wanted to kind of tell more of her story and what all happened and everything so i hope you guys enjoyed that and if you have any questions leave them below i'll try to get back to you guys so thanks so much for watching though and check out our daily vlogs i'm sure we'll see you guys soon have a great day